and triumphs. How many of you know that it's getting dark outside? Getting dark, right? It's getting dark. The clocks have gone. Have they gone forward, backward? I don't know. It's getting dark. Right? Have you noticed that? It's getting dark. And not just when you walk out your front door. In the culture around us, it's getting dark. Did you know that? Can you see that? If you went and bought all the Sunday papers this morning, you could read all about how it's getting dark in the culture around us. Yeah? It's true, isn't it? The things that are happening on our streets regularly, the rise in mental health problems in, across the nation, it's getting dark. It's get, how many of you know it's, it's, it can be difficult to live as a Christian in dark days? It can, can't it? It can be difficult. I, I, I'm not going to waste any time. First book recommendation. I've already spoken for two minutes. First book recommendation. Serious times. They're serious times, dear people. And uh, I was trying to find the quote in here. I didn't bring my copy and I couldn't find it. But there's a quote in here um, which says something like this. The days are, the, the days are, too, are, too, are too dark. The gospel is too glorious for us to live with anything other than wholehearted love and devotion to Jesus. Something like, he said it, but read it and you get the real thing. Now, I asked Angie how much this was. She told me a fib. It says nine pounds on here, and she said ten. So, as a, as a result of that, it's five, okay? <laughs> but really, you know, if, if, if you, it, it's, it, it, it'll take a little bit of reading, but just tra- tracking through. Uh, and, and this guy's telling his own story of his own uh, devotion to, to Jesus in, in challenging. To, so please, serious times. There's several copies there. Five pounds. Pray for me as we go home. <laughs> I want to speak this morning on how can we live for Jesus in dark days. How do we do that? And I've got to speak on a subject that one doesn't often preach about. We're going through 2 Thessalonians, and we've got to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and it's all about the man of lawlessness, otherwise known as the Antichrist. I don't think I've ever preached on this. Well, maybe I have once in all my years. There's only two places in the Bible where we read about the Antichrist. And one, the one here, and the other time is in 1 John 2, 18, where, where John writes, Dear children, this is the last hour. As you've heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know that it's the last hour. And uh, basically, John is telling us, between the first coming and the second coming of Jesus, it's the last days. Are we living in the last days? Yes, we are. Okay, that's in the Bible's perspective, everything between the first coming and the second coming is the last days, because we're living with an expectation of Jesus coming again. And so I'm, I, I'm going to speak about light in the darkness. Light in the darkness. And, and if you need help living as a Christian in difficult days, stick with me this next little while and let's see what the Lord has to say to us. So we're in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and we're at verse 1. Okay, verse 1. Concerning... The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him. By the way, I'm going to come back to this. That word gathered to him, in that form, it's only twice in the New Testament. And the other time is when it speaks about our gathering together. Don't neglect your gathering together. Come back to that later. So, about the second coming, about the, so about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him. Now, there's a lot in Thessalonians about the coming of Christ. Why? Because they were being persecuted. And when you're being persecuted, you need to know how the story ends. Right? You do. When you're going through difficult times, when you're up against it, you need to know how the story ends. You know, flick to the back page. Do you ever do that when you read a novel? Oh, that's a relief. Okay, I can read it now. And that's why Paul is right to the Thessalonians. You can read it in, in 1 Thessalonians. They're being persecuted for their faith. Paul had to leave town. He was only there a short while because of the persecution. 
Okay. Read on. We ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled. Okay. Uh, don't become easily unsettled. Now that the word there, it's like a, uh, uh, it's, it's like a ship losing its anchor. I like things to do with boats. Okay. It's like a ship losing its anchor. It's just going to get driven with the wind. That's what happens when you lose your anchor. You just get, you just blow, you just get driven by the, the, the wind around. And it's important that for, for you and I, Paul is saying, I don't want you to get blown around when things are on the news headlines, panic, fear, catastrophe. I don't want you to get blown around. I want you to know how the story ends. Come on in, lovely to see you. There's some lovely seats here in the second row. Calm down and, in, and join us. Okay, so I'm, I just keep going. Um, I don't want you to become easily unsettled. Are you unsettled this morning? Are you thrown by what's happening in the world, news headlines and all the rest of it? Paul doesn't want you to be, neither does the Lord. Okay, keep going. Or alarmed. Now that word means like kind of, you know, getting in a flap. Don't want you to be alarmed. It's like peace, be still. Lots of people are alarmed in these days, aren't they? It, we could get alarmed very easily, right? I, I, I'm not going to ask for hands to go up here, but I think if we were all honest, how many of you get alarmed in the course of a week? I think most hands would go up in the air. Different things that are going on in and around our lives, we get alarmed. Paul is saying, I don't want you to become unsettled or alarmed. By teaching allegedly from us, whether by prophecy or word of mouth or letter, asserting that the day of the Lord's already come. Someone was saying, Jesus coming back? Nah. It's already happened. It's sort of a spiritual thing. He's not really coming. That is probably the most popular teaching in, in, in the church at this time. If you took a pot, if you looked around different branches of the church, the most popular teaching would be. Jesus coming back, literally, you know, visually? No, it's a spiritual thing. We've got the same problem. And Paul's saying, I want you to know how the story's ending. I want you to know how the story ends. I want you to know that there is a day coming. There's a, 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 a magnificent, wonderful day coming. And it may sound fantastic, Jesus appearing in glory across the whole earth. Yes. Yes. So they so please don't be in doubt. Don't lose sight of how the story ends. I don't want you to get deceived that the day isn't going to come because the, the day won't come. We know it's not come because the man of lawlessness is going to be revealed first, the one who's doomed to destruction. He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or worshipped. He'll set himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Now, there's been many antichrists through church history. Perhaps the most spectacular one was Antiochus Epiphanes. Uh, you may have heard he captured Jerusalem, desecrated the temple by offering a pig on the altar. Okay, Jews, pigs, ah, got the picture? He desecrated the temple. There's been lots of antichrists. I'm not going to name them, but you can, you know, you look on it and say, well, that's evil. Goodness me, the suffering that's happened, that, that is, it, am I right? There's many. Now, it, 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 let me say something really important here. Don't try and work out. I mean, some people get into all this speculation. Who is it? When's it going to be? How's it going to happen? He, Paul's already said in 1 Thessalonians, thieves come when you don't know they're coming. And that's what it's going to be like with Jesus. Now, here's the thing. God did not give us the Bible to give us a calendar of what's going to happen. He's given us a Bible to give us courage and character while we wait. You got it? God did not give us the Bible as a calendar to, work, to try and work it all out. He gave the Bible to us to give us courage and character while we wait. Got it? Okay. So don't let anyone deceive you. These things are going to happen. Verse 5, don't you remember, when I was with you, I used to tell you these things. 
And you now know who's holding him back, the, the lawlessness one, lawless one, so he may be revealed at the proper time. Verse 7. For the secret or secret power of lawlessness is already at work. Okay? So the lawless one, Antichrist. The secret power of lawlessness is already at work. Now, when you look at the news and your newspapers, I want you to remember that. The secret power of lawlessness is already at work. Satan is already at work across the world. The spiritual forces, the secret power of lawlessness, already at work across the nations. Okay? Sometimes you read the news and we all it's all so so bad, we all say, Oh, that is really evil. Am I right? We do. Other times it's not so clear. Secret power of lawlessness. It's already at work. Now, you're probably sitting there thinking, Goff, I didn't really need this on a Sunday morning. This is pretty gloomy. Well, that was the bad news. Uh, that's what we need to be alert to, the secret power of lawlessness at work. And you can see it in, around you. Just the evil, the just, yeah, I'm not going to go, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? And it seems to be getting more and more evident, am I right? And the, what it's saying in this verse here is that it is restrained, but at some point the restraint's going to be taken away. Now, whether that, some people think that restraint is governments, others think it's the Holy Spirit, whatever. God kind of, rest, it is restrained one way or other, but before the final day when Jesus comes, there'll be sort of a, Satan will have his last fling. Let me put it like that. Okay. Let's get to the good news. Now, I told you about the secret power of lawlessness. That word secret is actually the Greek word mystery, myster mysterium. I want to tell you about another mystery that's going on in the world. I want to tell you about the, the secret power of righteousness. You see, God is doing his secret thing as well. Secret power of lawlessness. Listen to this. Let me read to you. The mystery, Colossians 1.26, the mystery that's been kept hidden for ages and generations is now being disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, has, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm so glad that mystery is going around, aren't you? The mystery of lawlessness is so obvious and destructive and foul and fearful and horrible. But there's another mystery going on, and it's the mystery of righteousness. And it's Christ in you. Is that beautiful? Do you, is, that, is that good news? I, I, I really... I. I'm excited about that. Now, I've got a box here. I've got to be very careful when I open it because it's all very delicate in here, okay? I've got to be really, really, really careful. Now, look, I've, I've just bought this, all right? I'm really proud of this, look. I've got to be really careful. I mean, isn't that a thing of rare beauty? Is that, is that a thing of rare beauty? Is that nice? I mean, you know, I won't tell you how much it costs. It makes your eyes water. Isn't that a thing of rare beauty? Yeah? I've got to be really careful. You see, as soon as I take that out of the box, this thing is in danger. I might drop it. I might sneeze. I might, I don't know, anything. It can get broken, right? Now, that's a bit like your life. You are, the Bible says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And you know what? There's dozens other like this, like this one in the shop. But there's only one like you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Did you know that? You are. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. But you're in a precarious place, just rattling around. Very precarious place. Yeah? And, and if, I, if, if I don't do, if, I, if I'm not careful with this, it'll just end up on the scrap heap. And so will you, if you're not careful with your life. Now, 
what this needs really, it needs to get, it needs to get plugged into this lump of rock. Okay? It needs to get plugged into this lump of rock where it's going to be, okay, I can breathe now because it's safe. And you, I'm sure you know, Jesus told the story about, about when the storm's around. If you haven't built your life upon the rock, upon the truth of who Jesus is and what he's done for you, if you've built your life on the sand, when the storms come, you are going to get smashed. Right? And that, that's what's happening in the world around us. But you, if you will take hold of what Jesus says, his words... And, and build your life upon a rock that you're in a safe place. We're going through, we're going through the Sermon on the Mount uh, with, more, with um, King's Dailies. And in fact, this, this very week, I think around about Thursday, Friday, we'll be getting to the house on the rock and the house on the sand. So join us, okay, in the morning. It's 8 o'clock, quite a gang of us. Or you can just watch it later on in the day. Okay, so that is now in the rock, and it is in a safer place. Do you agree? Yep, is that okay? Is, it, uh, is there anything else here? Do you, uh, you know, uh, do you, are you expecting something more? Right. We expe- we're expecting a bit more here, aren't we? We're expecting not just that we're kind of holding on to truth. By the way, second prayer, push this. this is, I'll tell you what, there's a lovely Bible, there's some lovely Bible here. This is rock. This is. This is J.I. Packer, this is God's lifeline that we hold on to while the rescue is in progress. The Bible, God's word, is full of promises and his presence. This is a really nice one. It's, it's an NIV. Oh, it's got a lovely feel, leather there. It's really, really, really nice. Um, I'm, I'm, um, this one, okay, look, this morning, you can have this. This is... 10 pounds. It's, 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 it's twice that. You can have this for 10. Yeah? 10 pounds. There's two of them. Please, if you haven't got, I know you might have the Bible on your phone. That's great. But I want you to have something you can get hold of and, and really own and treasure and, 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 and use. So please get yourself a lovely Bible. And you can have, there's a few of these at the back for 10 pounds this morning. Or, if you can't afford that, you can have one of these free, okay? These paperback ones, you can have one free this morning. I'm in trouble. So, okay, so what do I want to do here? I want to turn it on, don't I? I don't know, I really don't know what's going to happen, whether it's going to work. Is it, oh, it, do you see that? Is that nice? Did, did anything happen? Something happened, okay, right. So, um, it's, it's now... It's now beginning to light up. Okay. Now, this is what it was made for to light up. Okay. Um, when it gets dark, you need more, you need more power in the, in the light, right? The darker it gets, the, the more you need in there. Uh, do you agree? Okay. So we've got to work out how we get more light out of this. Now, I, I can do it quite simply here, you know. I, ooh, look, this is, I'm enjoying this. This is fun, right? Okay. The darker it gets, the more light we need. And, folks, in dark days, in challenging days, when it's difficult to follow Jesus, we need more glow inside our lives. Are you, am I right? Do you hear me? We, we've got to work out how do we make this light brighter? Now, it's, it, it, the bit that Toby read last week, 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 10, it's, that whole chapter, it's all about glory. Now, okay, well, this is a funny word, isn't it? It comes about eight times in chapter 1. It's about glory. Glory is, is the presence of God. It's, whoa, it's dazzling. It's bright. It's kind of, let me give you a real, ooh, oh, no, let's go that way. Whoa, that's glory, okay? I enjoyed doing that. Okay. It's Glory is the manifest presence of God, the wow of God. Now, look at what Toby took us through last week. He's speaking on the day where he's, when, he, when Jesus comes, listen, to be glorified in his holy people. Okay, it doesn't say glorified in front of his holy people. You know, here's Jesus Wow, glory. 
It says there, to be glorified in his holy people. And here's the thing. You're not just a megaphone to tell people about Jesus, nor are you just a mirror to somehow reflect Jesus to your people you work with. You're a radiator because you've got the life of Jesus in you. Think about it. Is that special or what? Ooh, I've got goosebumps. We're radiators. The mystery is Christ in me, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Is that good? Oh, this is encouraging me. So we've got Christ in us. I say we're not just megaphones shouting at people. We're not just mirrors trying to, you know, reflect. We're radiators to radiate the beauty of Jesus. And just imagine, can you imagine, you know, when the day Jesus comes, millions of light bulbs like this, the, glory, the people of God, us, with radiating the presence of the Lord Jesus. Do you find that exciting? I find it very, very, very exciting. So let me just start off. I'm not speaking much longer. I want to speak to this, this, it, some people this morning. Maybe you have never invited Jesus into your life. You know? Maybe you've never invited Jesus into your life. And perhaps you've heard about him, and maybe you even accept his teaching. You'd like to sort of live that way. I want to, I want to urge you this morning. These are, these are urgent days. I want to hold, hold out to you the offer that Jesus makes when he says to you, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I have come that you might have life, said Jesus. He wants to give you a bright and glorious future. Please, 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 if you have never invited Jesus into your life, you can do it right now. And I urge you, I'm going to pray for you right now before I go on. Lord, what a joy. I I remember when I came to you, I didn't know much more than, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. Please, come into my life. I believe you died for me. Take all the grot from my life. Come and live in me. Lord, I pray this morning, some here would make that radical prayer, the most radical prayer they could ever make. Please, may they do it this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, secondly, those who you need more, you just know you need, you're dull, you're really dull. Maybe you're the, well, the prodigal that Toby spoke about, and you just, you've got no joy, you're dull, and you just want more of the Lord in your life. How do we do that? Well, let's see what, 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 what Paul says in Toby's passage from last week. It says that he's coming to be glorified in his holy people and marveled at at those who believe. This includes you because you believe that testimony. With this in mind, says Paul, we constantly pray for you that the light bulb's going to go on more and more, that Christ would make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by And we pray this so the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you. Is that beautiful? Tim, would you jump up on the keyboard for a moment? That would be great. So, folks, Paul says because of this future, because of this calling, because we're going to be radiators, he's praying that, 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 that we basically... Get serious about following Jesus, committing every day to him, committing our lives to him, yeah? And and, and living every day for his glory. You know, it's like every morning, Lord, I want to give today to you. I want to walk with you. 
okay? That, that, that's what it means, to, to be glorified in, in us. Now, I want to say one more thing about these, these things. You see those kind of golden threads there, yeah? I hope this works. Think of those as golden threads of the grace of God in your life. Because that's what lights up. And of course, the biggest thread is when you accepted the Lord Jesus as your saviour. Wow, as a thread comes into your life. Now, a little bit of schoolboy physics here. Um, scientists, give me a break, okay. Now, this is actually an LED bulb, okay? LED. And do you know what LED stands for? It's a light-emitting diode. And what happens in a, in a light emitting diode, with using very clever materials to get the right colour, you have what is called a PN junction, okay? Positive and a negative semiconductor pushed together, and when the current goes on, it... And I want to put it like this. Positive, negative conductor. All those ch difficulties in your life all those sadnesses, those moments when you've dared to trust him, when you've held on in painful moments, when you've thrown yourself on the Lord Jesus, another thread of God's grace gets woven into your life. And there's a little bit more that can glorify Jesus in your life. Do you see? Those moments when you, you perhaps feel so heartbroken and you want to give up and you want to run, but somehow you just throw yourself on God. The negative to the positive. God's grace comes into your life. It's another thread, a golden thread of God's grace. And so basically, I mean, <laughs> the more... But you can't lose, basically. The more bashes and bruises and losses that you walk through in life, if you will throw yourself on the grace of God, Lord, I just don't understand, but I trust you. If you will throw yourself on the grace of God, another golden thread of grace goes into your life, able to reflect more the glory of God. Is that precious? Isn't that beautiful? My grace is sufficient for you. It's made perfect in weakness. So how do we turn the bulb up? Well, we give our life to the Lord Jesus on a daily basis. But there's something else here. And John Piper puts it like this. God has given us singing as the most powerful expression of our gladness in God. That's why I'm always going on about singing and worshipping. Because that's what they're doing around the throne. They're just worshipping Jesus. And of course, you know when Jesus left the disciples, he said, I'm going away, but the Holy Spirit's coming. Don't worry, Holy Spirit's coming. And, and he's going to be in you. And you know what he does? He will glorify me, right? So when I start singing, give me a note. Can you give me a note there? I've got a note. Okay. When I start singing, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. When I start to do that, the Holy Spirit inside of me says, ooh, that's what I do. I glorify Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit starts to work in my life. That's why I love to sing and worship. It's what you were made for. God has given his people singing as the greatest expression of our gladness in God. And John Piper goes on to say, he is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. Is that beautiful? So right now, let, let the light, I mean, your light bulb might be down there somewhere this morning, okay? Let, let's turn it up, shall we? Now, just stay seated, but we're going to, don't be self-conscious. I've got over that years ago. Let's, we've got this simple song. The words might come up, I don't know. 
a simple song. I just want you to invite the Lord to turn the light up in your life as you worship. Okay, so Tim, let's do that again. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to self-conscious just worship Jesus take joy my king come Holy Spirit in what you hear turn the light up Lord Jesus let me be a sweet sweet sound in your let it just be your devotion let's do this Come join with me, please. I love you, Lord, yes, Lord. And I live. I want to glorify you, Lord. To worship you, all oh, my soul. Oh, Come, Holy Spirit, help us. Let's let's go for another one. Here we go. Uh, let's try this. I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone I long to worship. You. to just kind of stumble through our Christian lives. Lord, the days are too urgent. The gospel, the good news is too glorious. And Lord, we want to live for your glory. And Lord, I pray for everyone here. Lord, I pray going into this week, Lord, turn the light on. Holy Spirit, come on us. Lord, we pray for an outpouring at this time, a a revival, an outpouring from heaven. Lord, the, the whole church, Lord, we Across this nation badly needs to see just millions of light bulbs glowing with the glory of God. Oh Lord, we, we please help us. Please forgive us where we're, we've been half-hearted. And Lord, I pray for those who are going through tough times. Lord, I do. And, and I know what it's like to go through hard times. When we are singing that chorus earlier on, he gives and takes away. Oh, the, the, yes, there's, there's pain on the journey, but Lord, I, I thank you that if we throw ourselves upon you, it, it's an opportunity for the grace and glory of God to come on our lives. And so I pray for those dear ones going through hard times right now. I pray for Reg, who's, what's, what's he got? Something's, he's ill, he's got, I forget what it is. He's ill, he's, he's on his own at home. He's ill, he's unwell. Lord, bless the dear man. Bless him. Please, I pray take care of him. Pray for Sue Hughes over there. Operation this week. Lord, lots of grace. Oh God, I pray just lots of grace for Sue. Others here this morning. Oh Lord, turn morning into dancing as you come and fill our lives. 
Lord Jesus, we love you. We want to worship you. We want to worship you. Can we, can we do that song, that Eagle's Wings? Is that okay, Jim? Well, let me just say one more thing and then I'll get out of the way. I mentioned at the beginning, verse 1, where it says, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus and our gathering together to him. That word gathering together, I told you, there's only two forms, twice that form in the New Testament. The other one is when, when, when it says in Hebrews, don't neglect your gathering together as family. You see, in other words, when we gather on a Sunday morning, it's an anticipation of when we gather to the Lord Jesus. Do you realise that? It's not just a meeting. It's, 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 a, it's a foretaste. It's a, it, it, it's a little glimpse that's why it's so important to gather together. I want to urge, please, so glad you're here in the room. It's beautiful, beautiful. Because this is an anticipation of the gathering together to the Lord Jesus. And the light bulbs go on as we worship. And it gives glory to God. And it's a tiny little taster of what it's going to be when Jesus comes. And it's all glory. So please, don't neglect your assembly together. I hear the statistics. People come to church... One in three now. God, no, the days are dark. Every priest, this is urgent. It's a foretaste of, of, of the coming of the Lord. I want to urge you. I'm believing for wonderful days as we gather. I'm believing for the light to get brighter as we come and worship and open the word on a Sunday. Thank you for being here. Bless you for being here. Precious. Let's do that song. And I will get out of the way. Lord, as we sing this song, it's our prayer to you. It's our prayer. Come Holy Spirit as we sing this song, I pray. Over to Tim. Here I am waiting. Shall we stand together? Inviting. It's a beautiful song. I pray. Make it your prayer. Make it your prayer. Here I am. Come, Holy Spirit. For you. 